Hey the guys and girls, nerds and geeks. Hello, what? all 13 of you watching. I, I think there are more now. Really? Yeah, I think there Yay. are. Yay! We're well, expanding. Let's find out. Welcome to another episode of uh, the United League of Nerds and Geeks. This time we're doing something different. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Once again, ooh, we're actually busy with something. Not actually, we're busy with something where from we're not showing our faces again. Yay, we've become shy. No, we've just went anonymous. Ah, yes. There are many people out there to find me. Sure. Find so, I think this is probably going to be the first episode that we're both actually together digitally. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. We should do this more often, yes. Yeah. 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 So, Gowen and I, we were talking. Hmm, hmm. What shall we do? Yeah. So we were talking about a few video games, and then I looked at my, oh yeah, bookcase, and I saw fighting fantasy books. Brilliantly written books. They're game books, so pretty much what it means is you read, and then you need to make a choice. And that can be a choice which can lift you up to amazing new levels, or can absolutely kill you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, brilliant... Uh, Brilliant books they are. If I remember correctly, they have been written by Steve Jackson and uh, Ian Livingston. And I've got to say, compliments. Compliments. So, as usual, I got curious about... Oh, oh, because I have 20 of the books. I was thinking, hmm, hmm, do they also have something like online? And they do on Steam. They have uh, Fighting Fantasy and then they have the classics. What they uh, call it. And... Um, the game books which are here, which are locked, I have a physical copy of. But the free book which you apparently get with it, Bloodbone, is one which I actually don't have. So, I think we decided, well, I think we, we decided that um, we're going to have a try at the Steam version. Yeah, and uh, I hope it will leave a good first impression because uh, I actually have never played these games before. So, uh, no, I haven't. So, uh, now and then I'll probably try and give you a slight hint of possibly things that could happen, but I'll leave the main uh, I'll leave the main part just up to you. Of course. Uh, decide. Let's start with blood bones. Blood bones. All right. The dreaded pirate lord Cinema, blood bones to those who fear him, was once the scourge of the twelve seas. Now he's back from the dead. Seeking revenge with the dark powers of Fudu at his command. Ooh, Fudu pipe. But you have revenge of your own on your mind. Cinnabar murdered your family when you were a child. Only <laughs> you can prevent a new reign of terror by destroying the pirate captain and his crew of cutthroats. Come hell or high water bloodboats must be stopped. Oh, actually quite interesting because the authors which I uh, called before, yeah. Yes. They actually haven't written this book. This book was written by Jonathan Green. Hmm. hmm. I have no idea who that individual is. <laughs> Same here. Uh, I know Ian Livingstone and uh, Steve Jackson. Because Steve Jackson also makes uh, games, actually. Uh, Steve Jackson games. To be honest, actually just quickly grabbing here. Yeah, I knew it. He actually also designed Munchkin. Munchkin, Munchkin. No. We have played that before. You that know, was uh, me, an odd me, experience. Me just, uh, me just being able to have Munchkin just at a hand, hands, hand away, like an arm's length away. Munchkin, brilliant game. We should play that again someday. Yes. Yeah. So let's see. How do we start? Probably by pressing here. Read. Fighting fantasy classic. Loading. Uh, Bloodbones is a fine fancy game book, yes, blah, blah, blah. Ah, Adventurer. Um, okay, um, okay, so all we can go for the Adventurer mode or Hardcore Hero. I would suggest Adventurer. Uh, yes, please. Because <laughs> uh, one of the things I'd say for experienced readers already familiar with printed versions of this game book, we recommend Hardcore, but we both don't know this. Play Blood Bones as it was intended. Your starting stamina and initial gold pieces are calculated by rolling 2d6 plus 12. Both your starting luck and skill scores are calculated by rolling 1d6 plus 6. Your rolls give unlimited bookmarks which act like placing your fingers between the pages. That is one of the things which I do actually find interesting with the books. 
Yes. Or you can choose to have just a pair of dice, always with you, yeah? Mm hmm Or, you can actually, if you're like, oh, I don't want to have, like, dice with me, yeah? You can actually just randomly go through the book, stop at a random page, and then you actually have, like, two little dice at the bottom, which should, like, be the dice. So instead of actually <laughs> rolling the dice, you can just flip through the pages, and it's like, stop there, and it's like, oh, I, I got snake eyes, it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> So, adventure. You have chosen the adventurer difficulty mode. Before continuing, uh, continuing, you must calculate your initial stamina. Um, yes, your stamina score reflects your general constitution. You will, uh, uh, your will to survive, your determination, and overall fitness. Uh, the higher your stamina score, the lo longer you will be able to survive. You must roll two dice and add twelve to the number rolled. Uh, Haven't you got any dice on you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Good. on screen, nice. This is then entered in the stamina box on your adventure sheet. Stamina will go up and down during your journey, but if your stamina falls to zero, you die and your adventure is over. If your stamina is getting low, remember to eat some of your proficients. You know what I was just thinking, actually? What? I'm pretty sure I can... do this. What did you do? Um, if you look at your sky... I refuse to go to big screen. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So I can just, see what you're doing. Just quickly for the people at home, we just quickly um, shared screens on Skype. Um, which, if it's correct, you won't have noticed. So, let's roll our starting stamina. Yes. Oh. That hey, a 10. So 10 Yay. plus 12 means our stamina is 22. We are very determined. Then uh, we roll our skill, which is the skill reflects your swordsmanship and general fighting expertise. The higher the better. Your starting skill is determined by rolling one die, adding six to the number. This is then entered in the skill box when you add pinch sheet. Okay. Which is a six. Woo! <laughs> We're lucky! <laughs> yes, we are! <laughs> oh, I guess luck is a superpower mm, after all. Mm, next determine your luck. Oh yeah, you've actually gone to Deadpool too, haven't you? Yes, I have. Ooh. I went there last night. I, I was a little late because... Some, uh, some, something good to be in a future episode, I would say. Uh, well, actually, I want to talk about Solo first. I have some complaints. Yeah, I can understand it. Well, your luck score indicates how naturally lucky a person you are. And magic. Our facts of life in the fantasy world. Let's see. So it's adding a six. It's a four. Okay. All right, all right. Um, uh, gold piece. Good enough. Um, Five. 17. 17. Total. Now you must prepare your adventurer's equipment. Um, okay, uh, you begin your adventure with the sword, backpack, tinderbox, gold pieces, and a lantern to light your way. The rationing your proficiency is key to a successful adventure. They may be consumed at any time, excluding combat, by accessing the adventure sheet. Each meal restores four stamina. Be sure to pay uh, close attention to your stamina and restore it regularly. In Bloodborne, you should begin your journey with no proficiency, regardless of your chosen difficulty level. Oh, that's interesting, because normally with the other ones, you start with like 10 proficiency. During your quest, you may encounter character and items that alter your free score. Stamina is going to lock. Usually, these scores may only ever be restored to their initial amount. On fair rare occasions, a particular page may grant an effect that defies this rule. Aside from these occasions, some magical items may also allow you to exceed your initial scores. Once you have readied your equipment, there's one more thing you should know. So, adventure sheet. That's our beautiful adventure sheet, our beautiful adventurer. <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks we look a bit like a Native American? Uh, it's, it's just a shade of black our hair has. Oh, oh, sure. They burnt down our village! So we must... Wait, that's Japanese. This it. is our stuff. Um... Then we have a map which won't be, which isn't there. Which is actually quite interesting because here we Wait. actually get a map where from in the book you won't have a map. Ourselves? So our character has multiple personality disorder. No, 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 no. During that point you will notice that hours will pass at key points. Usually when you have been doing something for a considerable length of time. This is very important as will become apparent as your adventure co uh, progresses. Try not to allow too many hours to pass. On we'll just, our uh, adventure. We'll just rush through the game. <laughs> okay, finally. <laughs> rush through it. Wow, you can't rush through these games. It all started... Uh, are you gonna... Okay. It all started ten years ago. 
when the evil pirate lord Cinnabar murdered your family. At a time you were only 12 years old and lived with your family in the small fishing village of Clam Beach on the northern coast of Rallostone, halfway between the two major ports of the kingdom, Harapnap, home to all lawful adventurers and sailors, and the sinister port of Crabs. Mmm, crap. Crap, people. Life in Clam Beach was not easy, but it did have a peaceful security about it. And then the terrible day came. Ooh. <gasps> It was a when clear I summer day in warming, when the huge forbidding black galleon sailed into the bay, flying the dreaded flag of the skull and crossbones. PIRATES! <laughs> the bloodthirsty cutthroats were soon racing up the beach towards the village. The fighting was swift and bloody. Soon most of the grown folks of Clam Beach had been killed. Your father and two siblings dying while trying to defend the village. When I close my eyes I can still hear the screaming! <laughs> In the end, the village elders had no choice but to surrender to the marauding raiders and open the village's meager treasure coffers. The cruel pirate captain came ashore from his ship to collect the booty himself. Ah, the booty. The sight of him filled you with awe and fear. <gasps> the pirate was a tall handsome man with a neatly trimmed pointed black beard and his hair tied back in a ponytail. He was dressed in the clothes of a nobleman with a fine scarlet coat trimmed with gold braid and wearing a large tricorn hat. At his waist hung a gleaming cutlass, and he could not help noticing that on the back of his right hand was tattooed the image of a grinning black skull. But don't skulls automatically grin? When the raiders had finally gone, filled with feelings of hatred for those who had murdered your family, you asked Ragai, the village soothsayer, who the pirate captain was. That villain is one of the most evil men ever to sail the Twelve Seas of Titan, was his vehement reply. He is one of the most feared pirate lords of our age, a creature without remorse, a murderer, and a follower of the bloodthirsty Fudu death god Queskari, whose mark is the Black Skull. He is Cinnabar, but because of the terrible atrocities he commits, he is also known as Bloodbone. From that moment, you found that one day you would have your revenge on the evil Cinnabar. Cinnabar or Cinnabar? Uh, I think Cinnabar. Cinnabar, Cinnabar. Cinnabar. Okay, Cinnabar. so we have a map. The Jolly Roger Inn. We you sk you skipped like half of the story there, Quinn. There was we another passage. Yeah, yeah, we can still go back to it. But it's, it's just... <laughs> we're at the end! Jolly Roger's Inn, okay. I, I'm, I'm always glad if a story starts in an inn. Uh, because that's, in general, how I start my uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign. That's how I started my campaign? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a good place to start. Uh, yeah. Uh, Let's just say it is. <laughs> ah, yes. Your mother became ill soon after that dreadful day, and three years later she died. On your 16th birthday, you left Clam Beach and made your way to Harapnap, gaining the position of cabin boy on a ship, travelling to the distant continent of Alantia. For the last six years, you have sailed all across the globe, but you never forgot the promise you made to yourself a decade ago. Over many voyages, you have tried to learn as much as you can about the rogue captain. You discovered that Cinnabar's galleon, the Virago, is frequently seen sailing in the waters around Nankunu Bay, that he has a hidden base somewhere close to the port of Crabs. You also gleaned as much information as you could about the notorious city. And so, when you decided that you were at last ready to confront uh, your enemy and the chance of passage on a merchant ship sailing to the port of crabs came up, you leapt at the opportunity. Vengeance, you are sure, will soon be yours. The port of crabs is haven to every pirate, buccaneer and freebooter who ply their trade of the coast of the kingdom of Ruddlestone in the old world. As you stand at the prow of the merchantman, Looking towards the land, you can make out the ramshackle jumble of buildings of the infamous city and the outline of the old port that stands above it like some ancient crumbling sentinel. The merchant man bumps against the stone yeti. Yeti? 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 Hmm. And you quickly disembark. Not only is the port of crabs one of the most dangerous cities in the old world, but a thick fog is starting to roll in from the sea. It is late afternoon on a chill day in the month. Off. Let's find out. I'll, uh, uh, what? The month. the month of unlocking, of course. Uh, let's just say the month of June. Sure. 
it's, it's month... June when we're recording this, so it, it makes sense. The month of June. Unlocking and the dogs are bustling. Oh, wait. In the month of unlocking. Oh. I think the month is just called unlocking. They have like different months. All right, uh, all right. In the month of unlocking and the dogs are bustling with activity. Standing close to the quay, quay side is a large old stone building which looks like it could withstand a battering from Hidana, god of the deep himself. Hanging over its sturdy oak door is a faded sign declaring that this is the Jolly Roger. Jolly this Roger, really? A good place as any to begin your search for cinema. So you enter the inn. It's cherry flavor. The spacious bar inside the Jolly Roger is packed with all manner of scurvy looking sailors and other lowlifes. The landlord is as big as an ox and he has a large anchor tattooed on one arm. No one takes any notice of you as you enter. So you approach the bar and order a tankard of ale, costing one gold piece. Ooh. You decide to question the landlord about Cinnabar first. Over your tankard of ale, you talk about the weather and the state of the trade, and then draw the innkeeper onto the subject of the pirate you seek. I hear... oh wait, you may go. I hear the Virago plies these waters. You I say. say. I'm surprised we weren't attacked ourselves. Not anymore, it doesn't, the landlord replies. Have you not heard? Cinnabar has been dead these last six months. <gasps> really? Cinnabar dead? You have come all this way after years of harboring this eyes for revenge, only to find out that the Dread Pirate Lord has already passed from this world. Let's ask him how he died. Have you not heard? I would have thought that everyone as far as the Diamond Islands would know by now. It all happened last hiding. You listened attentively as the innkeeper relates the tale. It appears that Cinnabar and his crew were emptying the hold of a galley sailing from Harad Harapnap to Arkelton in distant Annaland when the renowned bounty hunter Conan caught up them in his ship, the Fortune. Oh, Fortune. Unable to escape, Cinnabar and his men had to defend themselves against the crews of the galley and Conan. Fierce fighting ensued with Cinnabar eventually falling at Conan's hand. Having suffered an incredible number of wounds, his body being lost to the sea. With their leader killed, the surviving members of his crew fled aboard the Virgo, returning to the port of Crabs. Soon after, Cinnabar's second in command, Myral the Red, set off in the Virgo amid terrible storms, purportedly to recover her captain's body. Many now believe that the pirate lord's galleon sank as it has not been seen since, the landlord says, concluding his story. You thank him for his help, and in a bewildered daze, you make to leave the inn. You console yourself with the thought that at least the murderer of your family has at least been brought to justice. As you leave the Jolly Roger, you feel someone pulling on your jerkin. Ooh, jerkin. Jerkin. <coughs> Turning around, you discover that an old drunk slumped at a table. Grandpa, what are you doing here? By himself, is the one trying to attract your attention. Just because he's dead doesn't mean he's at rest, mutters the drunk. Curious about the drunk's words, you sit down opposite the old man and ask him what he means. Let's just say you don't want to go believing everything you hear, but I know what's going on. Oh yes, old Drake knows. Cinnabar isn't really dead, see, and he's coming back. The old man says in a harsh whisper. Oh, sorry, it was a whisper. <laughs> <laughs> Intrigued, you press Greg to tell you more, but he suddenly becomes serious and looks around the bar room uneasily. <laughs> Not here. Meet me outside in ten minutes. You nod in agreement and leave the Jolly Roger. Now All let's right. turn over. Can we finally make choices? <laughs> right now it's just story time. Damn. Uh, da -da -da. Um, tendrils of fog are now swirling around the boats in the harbour and oozing along the streets of the town. When the ten minutes are up, you quickly return to the Jolly Roger and sneak down the side alley next to it. In the mist and shadows at the end of the narrow alleyway, you can make out three figures standing over a fourth, cowering on the ground at their feet. Wasting no time, you draw your sword and dash towards them. Hearing your approach, the three pirates turn to face you. <laughs> the burly characters are ugly, scarred rogues, and the biggest of them who is easily wielding a heavy wooden club in one hand and holding a bullwhip in the other. 
looks as if he has some ogre blood in his lineage. Ooh. And the pirate's feet lie dreg, beaten, bruised, and only Jack <coughs> conscious. Here's the snooper! growls the half ogre. You're no match for us! By the time we finish with you, you'll be feeding the shrimps. Or rather, the shrimps will be feeding on you. Damn. The other two pirates burst into chorus, laughter at their companion's joke. Ha ha ha! Yeah, you're a fish bait! Still laughing, the ruffians advance towards you. Apart from the half ogre, there's a well built bearded man missing most of his teeth, and a leaner rogue with two ugly red scars running down the right hand side of his face. You may be about to engage in your first fighting fantasy battle. Mm. Would you like to know more about how combat works? I, I don't know. Would, would, would killing the half ogre make me a racist? Mm. Don't know. Alright, let's just kill them. Well, first of all, this is the question, do we want to know how combat works? Yes, we do. Probably I for think your we kind of need that later on. Probably for your sake, yes. Uh, That's our resolve by rolling two six-sided dice for both you and your enemy and adding the result of the roll to the respective skill score. This is called the attack strength. Both sets of dice are rolled at the same time. Your dice are white and your opponent's dice are red. If your attack strength is higher, you have wounded your foe causing 2 points of stamina damage. If the enemy's attack strength is higher, it has wounded you, causing 2 points of stamina. If they are the same, you both avoid. Uh, after hitting your opponent or taking stamina damage, you may use your luck to inflict a more serious wound on the creature or to minimize the effects of a wound you've received. Yeah? To do this, select the luck button which will roll 2 green sided dice. If the number rolled is equal to or less than your current luck score, you have been lucky. If it's higher, then you are unlucky. Um, if you are attacking and you are lucky, you have inflicted a severe wound and the enemy loses an extra 2 points of stamina. If you are unlucky, the wound was a mere grace and the creature only loses 1 point of stamina. Yeah? So yes. you can do more or less damage. Uh, with, if you have been wounded and you are lucky, you have uh, managed to avoid damage. Um, sorry, avoid the full damage of the blow and only lose 1 point. If you are unlucky, uh, you lose an extra point of stamina. Every time you use your luck, it decreases by one. So that is something that we really need to be. Uh, we only got, f we only have four, so we can like, we have four chances. Yeah. So as you see here, we have luck. We have ten. Oh, we have ten. And okay. We roll sure. two dice. So if we roll a ten or lower, yeah, we succeed in our throw. So pretty much with the first throw, we just need to roll lower than. Uh, a 5 and a 6 or 2 6, which is still a or but as soon as you reach 7 or lower than 7, it's like dangerous. So be quite wise, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and of course, until the stamina score uh, of either you or your foe has been brought to zero, you just keep battling on it again and again. So, excellent. How will you deal with the ruffians stepping menacingly towards you? Will you charge to one of them? Uh, if you want to stand firm and prepare to fight the rogues, or do you want to try and escape by running back along the alleyway? Hmm. I'd say... I want to stand firm and prepare to fight the rogues! Swing the cudgels, the pirates engage you in combat. It's time to fight! Fight! Okay, so the first pirate has a stamina of 4 and a skill of 7. We have a skill of 12, which is amazing, so we can... We actually have a bonus of 5 over them, and they only have a stamina of 4. So... Fight. We rolled 7, they rolled 5. Meaning that we do 2 damage. Do you want to try your luck, or do you want to fight Let's save round? our luck for more tough situations, okay? Yeah? So you want fight. to fight another round? Fight! And we roll the 10, they roll the 7, meaning we beat them quite easily. Yes. Now we're going on to the second pirate, which has a skill of 6, so it's actually easier to beat. So fight! Fight! Fuck! So we got high. We're white, no. they're red. So luck or fight? Fight. Fight. Again, we're, oh. we're gonna save up oh. our luck. So even though we roll lower, since our skill is like double their skill, we still win. 
You are triumphant. Excellent. 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 If you defeat these fi uh, fine scoundrels, you got here. The half ogre steps forward to fight you. Will you face your opponent, or will you try and escape? Um. Remember, you have a skill of twelve, which is the highest you could possibly get. I I I know, but I'm morally against killing ogres and greenskins. Right, like a half ogre. Ah, you're right. I'll I'll kill the human half of him. Yeah. Oh, God. Are you going to stab him? Yes. Let Let's kill the fucker. Let's half kill him. Dropping his whip, the half ogre moves in to attack you with his club. Get ready to fight. So he has a skill of eight and stamina of five. So, uh, uh, okay, this shouldn't be too tough. Okay. Fight! Ooh. Ooh. Oh. That's oh, 17, 17. It's a tie! You both miss. That, that must again. be quite awkward. Okay. Yeah. You hit the half ogre. Luck or fight? Fight. Again, we're saving luck for like occasions where we actually need it. So we got way higher and another fight. Right. Yeah, one more blow and he's basically and dead. And that's I think yep. So uh, you beat the half ogre. <laughs> you are once again triumphant. Excellent. If killed the half ogre, turn to 328. Yeah. The last of the pirates fall the last of the pirates falls and with some relief you sheath your sword. It looks as if the pirate has been beaten and dragged within an inch of his life and he is failing fast. You do your best to make the old uncomfortable, and he opens his eyes. Thanks, stranger, he gasps. But I'm a gunner now. They're up to something, you know. You ask him who's talking about. Cinema's crew. The pirates of the Black Skull. Looking at the hands of the rest of the assailants, you see that each bears the tattoo of a grinning Black Skull. I've seen them meeting up again around the taverns in the city. Sit us gallows, kill old Jack, old Griffin, even Malu the witch doctor. They're planning something, all right? Rumor says Myro the Red found Cinnabar's body, and that he's not rightly dead, but he's not rightly alive either. See, it's all that photo and black magic they meddle in. Not right it isn't. I've heard tell that they're planning something big tonight. You'd think old Snide and the guard would be looking into it. Truth be told, no one's been able to locate the hideout. Possibly because they're as blind as freaking bats. No, probably corrupt. Remember, this is a pirate code. Yeah, possible. Drag coughs weekly. <coughs> <coughs> it's coming back. Well, I'll be doomed, stranger. Aware the black skull. Blood bones is coming back. And then he's gone. Laying the old man down, you ponder his last words and what your next action should be. I shall avenge you, Drac! I shall avenge you! So, Cinnabar is not really dead. In that case, you may still have a chance for revenge. Yaha! But what did Drac mean when he said that Cinnabar is not really alive either? Hmm. Drac has given you several clues about your enemy and where you should start your search for him. And it seems that time is of the essence if you want to stop the Pirates of the Black Skull. Oh, that's why they mentioned the hour. Mm. Yeah, we shouldn't waste our time. We yeah. should, uh... Sure. The old man mentioned that the Pirates of the Black School were gathering again in the port of Crabs. So they may have a hidden base somewhere in the city. But of course, at present, you have no idea where it may be. Before leaving Dreg, you search the bodies of his assailants for any further clues. You find nothing helpful, but you do discover that one was carrying a bottle of rum. Drinking the rum will store four stamina points. Alcoholics. You have six options available to you, yeah? I'm just quickly looking at the time. I'll probably recommend that we make one of these choices in the next episode. One of the choices in the next episode? Sure. Of course. That's totally possible. Well, since, uh, since I've done more than enough outros, uh, digitally, and this is probably your first time you're going to be digitally in an episode so stay geeky stay cool stay in school yeah <laughs> yeah see you guys later goodbye